right, so we're down here at the uh, stern of the boat, and we're just about to do something very exciting. Yeah, big day for us. It's been a long time coming. Here we are. Uh, we got our cutlass bearing all lined up and bedded in yesterday. Uh, we had to do a little final tweaking on it, um, open up these holes a little bit, and also grind off a little bit of the, the new uh, tube that we put in the end. We had a little bit of misalignment going on back here still, and we could see it was compressing on the rubber here and a big gap on the other side. It was also throwing off the alignment inside. We had the tail shaft supported with a block of wood right here and um, had everything in line and made sure that our couplings inside uh, were even all the way around. So everything turned out really good. Our, uh, our alignment and our clearance on our, our couplings in between each other are within a thou, which is really, really close. So we're super happy how everything turned out, came out really well. So now it's time to put this prop on and we're just gonna double check everything inside before we tighten it all up. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go. So, uh, so these shafts actually have a taper on them right here for folks that aren't familiar with this kind of equipment. This is a standard taper. I don't know the exact specification for it, but it's just a standard prop taper. What that does is when you put your prop on, it actually locks onto that because you tighten up the nut and helps prevent it uh, from spinning. And these also have a keyway in them. We're not gonna put it in right now, but we will before we tighten everything down. So the taper on it just kind of friction locks it, right? Yeah, it'll friction lock it in there. And mm -hmm. even without the keyway, it makes it very hard to, to slide off and remove. Um, cool. Yeah. All right. So I guess we have to actually kind of be slightly careful that we don't put it on too tight here. Yep. Let me get to the other side, I think. This guy isn't terribly heavy, but probably a little over maybe 120 pounds or something. Yep. So we just took the sander to this earlier and shined it up a bit. Knocked the baby barnacles off of it. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. There it went. I just funked it home. All right, that looks really good. So I'm just looking at the uh, rubber lobes on the cutlass right here. They look even. It dropped just the tiniest little bit when we took the stick out, but uh, that is to be expected. I'd say no more than a thou. Everything on here is absolutely perfect, I would say. I like it. I, I'm yes. excited. Me too. <laughs> So we're gonna go up top, we're gonna take a few more measurements, make sure everything looks really good. Last thing to do up there is just to loosen up the bearing blocks again, they're just snugged up lightly. Um, draw all the couplings together if, if uh, none of our measurements have changed drastically. And that's, that's that. Um, start putting the bolts in, we'll torque them all down and uh, lock down our bearings after we check the side to side alignment, but we shall be good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Actually, I think the first thing to do is go get that stuffing box glued in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we'll fiddle with the other stuff after. Yeah. Yeah, looks good though. So, awesome. We're just gonna leave this just like this for now, I think, huh? Yep. All right, folks, we're just getting ready to do the final fit up on our prop here. Um, what we're going to do is check for contact between 
the taper on the shaft and the bore of the prop. So we want to ensure that we have good metal to metal contact on the hub, the inside bore. Uh, it's important because uh, the, the nuts that everybody probably thinks actually retains a prop on a shaft isn't what does that. It's the effect of the, the wedge of the taper of the shaft creates a wedge and as a prop spins through the water, it wedges it onto the shaft. Um, the nuts are there to retain it when you're going in reverse or anything like that to prevent it from spinning off backwards. But the, the taper of the shaft is the important part and also the contact in the hub. It's similar to like a Morse taper on a lathe or a milling machine. That's what gives it the, the friction fit and jams it on there. Um, so strong, in fact, that if you saw us remove this, it takes a considerable amount of force to remove it. Um, being that this is a new shaft and the old prop, we want to make sure that those match up good. And so we're going to use some Prussian blue and we're going to coat the, the taper of the shaft with that. And then we're going to put the prop back on and we're going to check for that, uh, that contact. So we'll go ahead and slide this off. We'll remove the key to do this. And we'll just set the sky like this, I think. We'll be fine. So like I say, you can see that there's a taper on this. And so as the propeller spins forward, it wants to move forward on the shaft and it'll wedge onto that taper. So if we take a look inside this hub, the hub, the bore of the hub, you can see that there is some grooving in there. So what we want to do is check for a really good tight fit in there. So we'll use Prussian blue. It's just a, a dyeing agent. Um, it's just kind of like a thin paint kind of, or ink I should say. And it's non-drying, so we'll wipe that down and uh, dry this off real good. And same thing with the bore. And then we'll apply the Prussian blue to this and we'll slide the prop back on and then we can remove it and we can check that fit right there. And if it looks good, we'll go with it. We want somewhere around 90% contact, so we don't want to see a bunch of spots that aren't, that don't have a impression on them. We want to see pretty good contact and pretty even contact. If we don't see that, then we'll take some lapping compound and it's just like a, a fine silicone and a paste and we'll put it on here and we'll actually turn the prop and that'll grind the brass away or the bronze on this propeller It'll grind it away and improve that fit so do we got some rags here this is wet inside I'll just wipe it out real quick so we want all these surfaces to be clean and dry There we go. And this looks good. Slap some of that stuff on there. Let's see what we got. So this is called Prussian blue. It's just like a non-drying ink, basically. <laughs> you won't find that cap if you drop it on the ground. Not in this gray <laughs> parking lot.
Yep, just paint it on the whole taper. Brush. It's thick. I don't know if it's because it's cold. Oh yeah, might not be helping anything, but. Does it have to be thick or just like thin enough to rub off, I guess? Yeah, thin enough to rub off. We're just looking for a uniform layer. If it's real thick, then it's gonna transfer into spots that might have hollows in them anyways. Little Prussian blue. Little Prussian blue. in their happy little space. Then you just clean Does that it. look all right? Yep. I think so. And we just clean off our brush with a little fast. All right, well, we got this coated. Um, I guess we'll put this prop up here and see I think we'll put the keyway back in and that way we're not inadvertently spinning it on there and smearing it or wiping it we just want to basically leave an impression I'll just tip it back up again to you. Oh, okay. watch here don't get your arm in that side Let me get that. Okay. Let me tip it. It's just being awkward like that. Okay. Now maybe uh, just tightened up a little bit. I'm sure there's guys that do this for a living and say, oh, you're going about it all wrong. Well, not a whole lot of info on the interwebs about this, so we gleaned what we could from a couple of sites and uh, just do our best. Let's just snug that up a little bit again, Matt. Okay. Without trying to spin the prop too much. So there's a lot of mixed info about how to actually put a prop on and how much force to apply to this. Um, for this size nut, the recommended torque is somewhere around 480 uh, foot pounds. So it's pretty, pretty substantial. They also say not to wedge the prop because in doing so you can cock it a little bit and you won't draw this up straight. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Everybody does it that way. You know, that's just how we do it, but it's not saying that it's right. So <laughs> we'll try and do it as, as proper as possible I guess well, maybe we'll just go uh, wedge that coupling up inside or something yeah so this can't spin but uh, yeah that uh, good or a little more maybe just a little bit more yeah probably good yeah so that uh, Info that I found was basically you put the nut on, you tighten it up, and then you you hit it with the hammer and just try and load it a little bit more. And then you put your jam nut on, and that's about that. These do have a cotter pin in them to hopefully keep all the stuff from sliding off in the event that your, your jam nut and your main nut comes loose. 
Um, some websites say to put the jam nut on first and the big one after. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the way it came from the manufacturer was the big nut on the front, so we're just gonna go with that. That's how everybody seems to do it. And uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, conflicting information out there and just not a whole lot of stuff to really go through, so. Yeah. To, to find out the answer, so that's what we got there. Um, we'll probably have to give it a couple of taps here. I want to put our earmuffs on again. It's a little bit loud. Off right there yeah good so we're just trying oh that could have been from the wood actually uh well i see some on my side oh you do oh yeah yeah that that'd be the, the wood can see it in a little bit more right there. so it didn't doesn't really contact right there too much but yeah so we'll just pull this off and uh take a look we want to do is take a look in the bore here so I'd say all in all that that is not a very good fit so I can see a lot of well you can see on the shaft right here it looks pretty good here but then there's a lot of area back here with no contact on it and same thing in here you can see a lot of Pretty good contact right here on the front, but then there's a lot of dry patches inside right here. There's really nothing there. So I'd say that's not very good contact. I do see some towards the back, but it's like very thin. Yeah. I'm just in from it. So I can see where it drug right here when we pulled it off or, or put it on. But what we're looking at is these streaks this way right here. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there's a lot of spots that there's not very good contact. So we'll go ahead and, and give it a little bit of a, a polish, I think, and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, the, the process for the lapping compound is, is pretty, pretty simple, really. Um, you just put some on the shaft, you put the prop back on there, and you spin it three or four times one way, and then you bring it back the other way and do the same thing. You'll feel it start to kind of get tight and, and start to grind together and, and lock up and then you know you're good and you can slide it off, clean it off, check it again. I guess that says the friction increases from the tighter fit maybe? Yeah, yep, as you're kind of grinding it away. Yeah, so we'll get the stuff cleaned up. That's the first thing is just to wipe this off and then we'll come back. Go get a flashlight and take a better look at this too. But yeah, there's a, a lot of, and I'm sure that that's gonna tighten up a lot more as we reef down on it, but really the goal is to get a good fit now. Yeah. Well, the boss just showed up, so we're getting back to work, trying to look busy. <laughs> she said we better do this right or we're in trouble. Um, right, Mom? No, just bringing him lunch. <laughs> <laughs> good lunch, too. Yeah. So, uh, so we just got some lapping compound here. So this is silicon carbide. It's 120 grit. So we'll go ahead and spread some of this stuff on there and we'll spin this prop around a little bit. Um, you just turn it two or three times each way and you'll kind of feel it start to bind up as uh, the friction on your taper improves. 
Uh, it'll basically be grinding away the bronze on the inside of the hub. It shouldn't affect the uh, stainless shaft much because it's much harder. And uh, yeah, we'll just see what happens. So this is the first stuff that you use, and then we've got some uh, some other stuff, some fine valve lap beam compound. It's 280 grit. So I'm guessing that you know, looking in here, the uh, the contact it's it's pretty bad. And so I'm actually really glad that we took the time to do this. We had to wait for the stuff to come in, and uh, I think that's going to be. Um, a valuable learning experience for us and also something good to do. Uh, I'd hate to lose this. Uh, I priced these a while back and, and the prices for a 40 inch wheel run anywhere from about $5,700 to well over 8000 So they are not cheap at all. So the last thing you want to do is lose one. So I'm just going to smear a little bit on here. I don't really know what we're doing. We're just kind of winging it. <clears throat> now if we're supposed to maybe just kind of put an evenish coat just a little bit on there just I'm guessing some of this is going to end up in the keyway before we're done so maybe we should just try and get a little bit on all the surfaces huh mm -hmm. like we did with the Prussian glue yep Okay, so this will go back on without the key this time, and we'll just we'll push it up tight, and then we'll just turn it back and forth. <clears throat> Not sure if we draw it up with the with the nut. We probably should a little bit, huh? Probably, yeah. Feel it and hear it. Gritty. It's fingernails on a chalkboard. I'm not so sure if that's necessary or not, but probably don't hurt, huh? Yeah, oh, at least they won't fall out. It feels. I don't feel wobble there. So okay, <laughs> let's see what happens. Okay, okay, so we'll just let's see. So we'll just use this for a mark. So. One, two, three, four. Can you feel the friction increasing in here? I don't know. Do you think it's on far enough? Well, the, when he did it, he just held it firmly, you know, and pushed in, and mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm doing here, so. Oh, that, I feel it now, right there. <clears throat> okay, well, let's pop it off and take a look. Okay. Now we should see nice, fresh, uh, Fresh bronze. Yeah, hopefully some fresh bronze where it is cleaning it up, so. Oh yeah, look at the color of that. I did something. Should come out of the light so you can see it better, T. There you go. Yeah, look how dirty it is. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I see a lot more gold in there now. See it, babe?
that really etches it, huh? Or was it like that? Uh, I think that you're just seeing the machining marks better now. Oh, I see. But that once we will wipe it down with some acetone and you won't see that. I guess we should like wipe it off now actually. Yeah. And I'll get this bore. Oh, that looks totally different in there now. Where's the, where's the flashlight at, T? Do you wipe this uh, off and then put the fine compound in then and run it again? Yeah, it's just scratches now. Yeah. Yeah, because that'll, it'll uh, polish that up. Like if you use some emery cloth on this, it'd look like it did when we started, right? I think so, yeah. Hopefully, like that's not too abrasive, but. You can really tell where it cleaned it up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, towards the back, it doesn't look like it's got very good contact at all yet, so. Cool. Now, we'll do that a few more times until we're happy with it finish cleaning it first because that might just be and wipe it very good just now yeah still got a bunch of grit towards the middle but you can see oh good i was like uh oh you can really see the difference right there yeah that kind of had me worried it's like wait how how much will we have to grind off then <laughs> it's a, oh, watch out for that last Okay, folks, uh, we just went ahead and hit this again off camera with the fine lapping compound. It's 280 grit, and uh, things look real good now. If we take a look inside this bore, you can see that it's, it's really shined it up now. You can see the dull finish is what's been shined up and, and lapped, and where it's got more of a darker looking patina is where it isn't. But you can see that the contact is much better in there now. Maybe not good, as good towards the very end. I think that has to do with it just not being drawn up tight on the shaft. But we're going to go ahead and put some Prussian blue on it again and take another look and see how it, how it is. You can tell that it definitely made a, a difference on the shaft too. You can see where it kind of has a matte finish now. Here, lean forward so you can see the hub there. There we go, man. That went on pretty easy, very evenly, I mean. Suck it in with the nut a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, see there's the overhang. Oh, it surely does, okay, well. I think so. Yep, it's still a quarter inch or so in. Yep. It's like, yeah, that then. Plug your ears. Might have to give it a few more taps, actually. There you go. Let's try it.
Okay, let's see how we did. Oh, wow. That is a marked difference right there. Can you get the shot? Where's the flashlight? In my pocket. See, we still have some spots that don't have much on it, but most of that bore looks pretty good now. Definitely a lot better than the first go around, huh? Yeah. All right. Try this again. Is that nut in the way? Mm hmm. Is that nut in the way? I we were hitting that. I don't think so. There we go. Giving us trouble. Feel okay? Yeah. I'm fine I feel fine. What's going on there? <laughs> Must have gotten wedged. Come, come to this side and give it a couple of taps. Had to go grab a hunk of aluminum and get a little more solid blow to that. That pine was just uh, caving in, but uh, yeah, got it. A couple more strikes, and let's see what we got here. We might actually still need to tap it off again. So, sees the wood now, though, huh? Yeah, I saw it moving. So. Well, I'd say that's a good thing. Yeah, if it seats on there and gets stuck, right? Yeah. And there's a little crud in that key. I saw it fall off right there. All right. Speaking of falling off, nice. Oh, did we just see a nice little dent in there? Probably. Cool. I think there was a dent somewhere. We just did that, huh?
think it's better. It ought to be better than that though. Seems better before. Maybe this stuff's not on very quick. I don't know why we, that was such a struggle right there. Well, something looked a little funny there. We had good contact on the bottom half, but up here at the top, it was pretty light. So we actually just took out the keyway, and now you can see that that's actually been contacted right there. Um, I think I think our keyway is a little tall. Let's roll her down here real careful. Take a look in here now. Got your flashlight, man, or do I have it? So we were looking over here at the keyway, and uh, yeah, you can tell that the pattern's a lot better in there now. And up towards the top. So I think our keyway is just a little bit tall now, so we're just gonna have to take a little tiny bit of material off of it. So as we lap this out, it, it changes the, um, it opens up the bore on this a little bit, which reduces the keyway size on this end. And so now our key is just probably just a little tiny bit tall. And I bet that's why it was trying to bind up on us also. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we have much better contact now. A lot better. Oh yeah. Loads better. Yeah. So interesting effect there, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Might have to head inside for inside work. It's getting cold out here. It is. <laughs> We've been at this for a while now. Sun is dropping. Yeah. It'll get really cold once it disappears. And we were planning on trying to get a couple of through holes fit up today. So this might be it for the, the prop for now, huh? Yeah, I think Unless so. you want to keep monkeying with it. But I'm ready to take a little break from it, I think. Yeah, go warm up at least. Yeah. But yeah. Well, let's pop this back on for the night and, uh, and we'll pick this up in the morning. But that's the general process right there, guys, is to, to just keep, you know, checking it and, and lap a little bit and check it again. And as you can see from where we started, it's, uh, it's a whole lot better, so um, we definitely wouldn't have known how that looked if we just stuck it on there and tightened it down and went with it the way it was. So I think that it was a worthwhile use of time to check that out and figure out what's going on with it and try and get it dialed in as, as good as possible. You know, within our means anyways. I guess that's one of the things when you have new and you have old, getting them to work together is important. And uh, pretty confident that it's gonna be about as best as we can make it and be a lot better than just putting it on there, doing nothing. For sure. Go the extra mile. Yeah. You can.